13.1 trigonometry with right angles, right triangles. Um, these trigonometric functions a lot of times will cause people a lot of uh, pain and anguish because they don't understand exactly what they are. Okay, so uh, let's talk about what they are. They're very simple things. Trigonometry comes from uh, two Greek words. You put them together, they mean uh, basically to measure triangles. Okay, so that's what we're doing. We're just measuring triangles, and that's all these functions do. Okay, so say you want to talk about these these functions. First, you have to be in a right triangle for to start out here, and you get to pick an angle that you're talking about. You could talk about this one, or you could talk about this one, either one. But once you pick it, then uh, you name the sides in relation to the angle. Okay, the only exception would be this guy right here. That's the longest side of the triangle. It's called the hypotenuse. Okay, the hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse whether you're talking about this angle or this angle. Okay, but uh, say we, we pick this angle. So now there's two more sides to label. This side is across from this angle, um, but instead of saying we cross, we say opposite. It's opposite. If you're sitting across from uh, the table from someone, you say you're sitting opposite them. Right? So what is this side? This side is right next to this angle. This one's not next to it. This one is. Uh, next to, uh, the word we use for right next to is adjacent. Okay. Opposite and adjacent. Okay. And there are, there are six functions six trigonometric functions, and they are simply ratios one side to another side. Right? If I take the opposite side and I divide it by the adjacent side, that's one of the functions that we're going to talk about. It has a name. If I take the hypotenuse over the adjacent side, that also has a special name. Any other combination you could think of, this over that, that over this, um, any of those that you can think of, it just has a special name that we call it. Okay. And for an angle, say this was 30 degrees, then no matter how big this triangle was, then say this side divided by this side would always be the same number. Whether this triangle is as small as it is to fit on this paper, or if you could imagine that this triangle was big enough to enclose the city you live in. Um, so your city was right here. Still, you take this side, you measure it, then you run along here and you measure this, and you divide this number by this number, always the same, no matter how big the triangle is. Okay, that's a, a, a property of these triangles that we use in order to measure them, in order to find out what these angles are, uh, or in order to find out what an unknown side measures. Okay, so let's start with the three most common uh, trigonometric functions. That's the sine of theta. By the way, you have to take the sine of theta. You can't just say sine. It doesn't mean anything. Uh, the sine of theta. Um, that, what this means is, the sine of theta means look at its um, opposite side and divide it by the hypotenuse. This sine is the name of this ratio. Okay, how about the cosine? The cosine of theta is another ratio. It's just a, sp a very specific ratio. It has a special name called the cosine, and the ratio that's called the cosine is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And the third one that most of us know is the tangent. It is just a special name of a ratio. It's the name of this ratio, the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. The opposite over adjacent. Okay. And let's start with the, there, there's three more. There's a total of six. There's six possible uh, ratios you could make of, of one, um, one side on top of another side. So let's start with the, the cotangent as we talk about the rest of these. The cotangent of theta, you look at theta, the, the cotangent is the name for uh, the adjacent side over the, hypoten or the opposite side, adjacent over opposite. Okay, and you'll notice the cotangent is just the reciprocal of the tangent. Flip over the tangent and you've got the cotangent. Okay, and it would make sense that clearly something's one of those ratios has got to be the reciprocal of this, and that ratio has to have a special name. Okay, so there is one that is the hypotenuse over the adjacent, and that one is called the secant. Okay, 
And there is a, the reciprocal of the sine. There's a, a, a ratio that's the hypotenuse over the opposite side. It's called the cosecant. Okay. So what I really wanna, want you to take away from this is that these things are, are not mysterious. They're, they're not weird. They're, uh, they're just the names of these ratios. I, I'm sure you can grasp the idea of taking the measure of one side here and dividing it by the measure of another side over there. We just find all the possible ways we can make those divisions, make those ratios, and we give them special names. That's what all these mean, okay? The only slight trick to it is just to remember that it depends which angle you're talking about. If you're talking about this one, here's the opposite side, here's the adjacent side. If you were talking about this one, now this would be the opposite and this would be adjacent, okay? But that's it. Just special names for some ratios. Now, let's take a look at some special angles and, and those six ratios for those angles. First, let's look at this special triangle. 45, 45, uh, and 90, of course, okay? And so like I said before, for a given angle, the sine, the cosine, the tangent, all six of those, uh, they're all going to be the same for a given angle. So the sine of 45 is always the sine of 45. No matter, it, and remember, sine is the opposite over hypotenuse. No matter what this actual number is and what this actual number is, the ratio will always, always, always be the same. Okay? Now, to find those values, let's just pick a value for one of these sides, and then we'll go about finding the rest of the sides. Um, so, let's see. Let's make... Well, we might as well make this just one. This might be easier or harder than the way that I normally do it, but it's probably the same. Uh, let's find this side. This side, uh, how do we find the hypotenuse if we have these two sides? By the way, if, if I called this one, of course I could call this one. This, these two angles here are the same, which means these two sides are the same. That's the a property of uh, isosceles triangles. So if this is one and this is one, what's this going to be? Uh, well, use the Pythagorean theorem, one squared plus one squared equals the hypotenuse squared, or c squared if you like. Uh, so two equals the hypotenuse squared. So the square root of 2 equals the hypotenuse. OK. So let's name all the special ratios for 45 degrees. The sine of 45 degrees, well, what's that? It's the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Okay, The opposite side is 1 over the hypotenuse, which is the square root of 2. All right, is this answer correct? Yes, it is. But, um, if you, if I, I don't know if you've ever heard that this is wrong. It's not wrong, um, but it's not conventional, right? So, um, we need to make it conventional so that when we talk about it in, in, uh, to our, our, uh, our math friends, then they'll take us seriously because they'll hear us talk about it, not one over the square root of two, but the conventional way. Well, what, what is the conventional way and why is it the conventional way? Um, well, why it's the conventional way. Uh, before calculators, which can absolutely do this calculation, before calculators were slide rules. And slide rules can't do this. One divided by the square root of two can't do it. Uh, but they could do like a square root divided by um, a whole number. So they would change these so that they were that, so that they were square root numbers over just whole numbers. And then they could make the division on their slide rules. Okay, so how do we do that? It's called rationalizing the denominator. The denominator. We're going to multiply this by something. So that right now we want to divide, or we want to multiply the square root of two by something, so that it's no longer, uh, you know, an irrational root. It's not the square root of two. It's just going to be some whole number. What could we multiply the square root of two by? So that there's no longer a, a root symbol there, and it's just a whole number. Well, if I multiply the square root of two by the square root of two then they, yeah, the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2. 
So if I multiply the, the denominator by the square root of 2, I need to multiply the numerator by the square root of 2. And this is called rationalizing the denominator. And as we said, the denominator is going to be 2 now, and the numerator is going to be the square root of 2. Okay? So um, there you go. Whatever, if you have a square root here, multiply by that square root on the, in the numerator and denominator, and you'll have rationalized the denominator. Okay, so on to the cosine. So anytime that happens, we're going to rationalize the denominator. So this is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. The adjacent side is 1 over the square root of 2. We just did all this work, so the square root of 2 over, the, over 2 is actually what we're going to use. Um, what's the tangent of 45? It's the opposite side over the adjacent side. Opposite over adjacent, 1 over 1, that's 1. Okay, now let's go with the other three. Uh, cotangent is the easiest one to remember, I think. And remember that the cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent. The reciprocal of 1, 1 over 1, is 1. How about the cosine? Uh, it has a, a, a reciprocal, and it's called the secant. Right. So what's the reciprocal of the square root of 2 over 2? Well, it would be 2 over the square root of 2, and we'd have to rationalize the denominator. But let's go back here. If we take the... the uh, reciprocal of 1 over the square root of 2. Well, that's the square root of 2 over 1. All the work is, is done already. So it's just the square root of 2. And as you might have guessed, seeing as the sine and the cosine are the same, the reciprocals would be the same, so the secant and the cosecant should be the same. This is also the square root of 2. All right. Um, hopefully quickly. We'll do another special triangle. 30, 60, 90. All right. So say I were to make this a 2. Okay. To help us find out the other two sides, that's, that's what we're interested in doing. To help us find that, uh, I'm going to draw a mirror image of this triangle. I'm going to flip it over and put it over here. You're going to have to imagine because it doesn't look like it. If I flip this all right, you know what I've done? I've mislabeled these. This should be 30, and this should be 60. Okay. So I'm going to draw a mirror image here. So what does that mean? This It means that this is going to be also 60. I'm drawing these in dotted lines so you don't incorporate this as a part of our problem. We are only interested in this triangle, but this triangle is going to help us. Uh, if this is 60, this is 60. If this is 30, then this is 30. And if these two are 30, that means all of this is 60. Well, what do you know about a 60, 60, 60 triangle? Uh, all of the angles are the same, and all of the sides are the same. So this side would be, if this is 2, then this would be 2. If th these are 2, if this is a, a, an equilateral triangle, this is a 2, this is a 2, this is also a 2, from here to here. If from here to here it's a 2, um, and we, this is a mirror image, then this must be equal to this. They add up to 2, so this is 1. All of that work to draw this triangle to just find out this is 1, okay? So now all of this dotted stuff we don't even need to worry about. Pretend it's not there. How are we going to find this guy right here? Well, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Uh, let's say a. Call that a. a squared plus 1 squared equals 2 squared. a squared equals 4 minus 1. Four, 2 squared is 4, and 1 squared is 1, and I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides, and so now I have this. So this is 4 minus 1 is 3, uh, and we're going to take the square root of both sides, so a equals the square root of 3. Okay, so let's start naming these special, tr special uh, ratios for 60 degrees. I can tell already, I'm just going to have to tack on a short video after this, so I'll see you there.